couple of years ago, I had the chance to volunteer at Fab Scrap, which is a nonprofit that collects, sorts, and recycles fashion and textile industry waste here in New York City. A really cool perk of volunteering is that you can take home any cool things that you happen to find while you're sorting through the materials. When I was there, I found a booklet filled with a giant collection of yarn swatches, and it totally inspired me, so I brought it home with me. Each little strip of cardboard has a selection of yarns taped to it, where all the yarns on a single piece are the exact same yarn type, but in different colors. And there's about a yard and a half of each sample wrapped around the cardboard, so there's a pretty substantial amount of yarn here. I'm assuming that these swatches were probably used to help a designer figure out what yarns and what colors they wanted to use for their collection. And it's crazy to think that all this yarn would have just gone to the landfill if it weren't for Fab Scrap Services. Anyway, when I saw this collection of fun and funky yarns, I thought it might be fun to try to find a way to incorporate them into a weaving project. The first thing I did was cut up all of the little cardboard strips so I could separate the swatches and scramble up the yarn types and the colors. I then spent an entire afternoon making a gigantic ball of these yarn swatches. I pulled a random swatch from my bag so that the color and the yarn type would be totally random, and then I unwound it from the cardboard. Thankfully, most of these were just secured with a single piece of tape, which made it really easy to take them off and to preserve as much of the sample as possible. I then tied the yarns together with a simple overhand knot, wound them into a ball, and then repeated this process until my bag was empty. And eventually I had a gigantic yarn ball that ended up weighing about six ounces in total. For my weaving, I thought it might be fun to do something similar to this piece that I made a little while back, which is definitely one of my favorites. But where there are these colorful stripes, I would instead use my scrappy ball. And instead of this white yarn that I used on the other half of my piece, I wanted to use a black yarn to complement all of my crazy scraps and let them shine. So I got a cone of 5-2 bamboo yarn from Webbs, which was close-ish in thickness to a lot of the yarns in my scrap ball. And I wound this black yarn onto some extra large bobbins. For this project, I just picked a simple, super wide black warp. This is a Saori pre-wound cotton warp that is 300 threads wide, and I threaded it onto my two harness loom using a five dent per centimeter reed. After evening out my warp threads with some toilet paper and weaving a few rows with just the black yarn, I was ready to incorporate my scrappy yarns and start my design. For this entire project, I wove with just one of my favorite weaving techniques, the clasped weft. I do have an entire tutorial video dedicated to this technique, but here are the basics of how it works. I started with each yarn coming out of a different side of my fabric. So in this case, my black yarn on my shuttle is coming from the left, and my scrappy yarn is on the floor to my right. I passed the shuttle through the open shed, looped it around the scrappy yarn that's hanging off the side, and then passed the shuttle back through the same open shed. Then I adjusted the yarns to place the join exactly where I wanted it, switched sheds, and beat. And I repeated this process over and over and over again. I also decided that whenever I ran into a knot that joined two yarns together, I would pull it up to the surface so that all the knots were on only one side of the finished fabric. For this project, my thought was that if I keep the black yarn on one side of the fabric and the scrappy yarn on the other side, and then have them intersect in random places, but mostly kind of concentrated in the middle-ish of the fabric, the overall fabric might look like two different fabrics are blending into one another. Even though it's just two yarns and one technique over and over and over again, I really like this technique because I find it super easy to fall into kind of a meditative rhythm. It was also really fun to see which yarns would come next because I tied up my scrappy ball so randomly and I had no idea how things were gonna turn out.
So I just kept weaving and weaving until I ran out of my scrappy yarn. When it was all finished, I cut my fabric from the loom. And in total, I ended up with a little bit more than two meters of fabric. I then ran the cut edges of my fabric through the sewing machine to secure everything in place. I found this much easier than hem stitching or tying up the fringe since I knew that I would hem all of my cut edges in the sewing project that I had in mind, which I was really excited about. But before I could start sewing, I had to wet finish my fabric. I filled a basin with warm water and eucalyptus wool wash. Let the fabric soak for about 15 minutes. And then hung it up to dry overnight. The next day, I ironed my fabric to get as much of the wrinkles out as possible. The thing is, a lot of the scrap yarns that I used in this project were chenille yarns, which are notorious for wrinkling and worming. So I knew that I could only do so much with an iron, and I just had to kind of embrace whatever texture this fabric wanted to have. Then it was finally time for sewing. Because I only had such a tiny amount of this fabric, and I really wanted to find a way to wear it, I figured my only real option was to turn it into an extremely simple little boxy jacket. The first thing I did was lay my fabric out on the floor, and I measured it to find the exact halfway point, which is where I made my first and only cut. As always, when sewing with loosely woven fabrics, I like to mark where I'm gonna make my cut, and then sew a line on each side of this cut line just to secure the fabric and to keep it from unweaving itself. I'm using a black thread so you can't really see my sewn lines, but I promise they're there. After cutting my fabric in half, I decided that I wanted the black sides of the fabric to face each other, and I overlapped one piece of fabric over the other by about a centimeter. Then I sewed the two fabrics together until about the halfway point. After they were sewn halfway, I folded the whole assemblage in half, and then I decided how wide I wanted to make my armholes. Then I sewed only a few inches to join the fabric on each side. And that's it. And here's how the whole project turned out. I'm so happy that I got to give all of these crazy scrap yarns a new life. The yarns themselves have so much fun texture, glitter, shine, and character. It would have been such a shame to let them go to waste. And I think that pairing them with the plain black both tones down the wild yarns and also lets them shine at the same time. I also love that because I put all the knots on only one side of the fabric, the jacket's reversible. So I can just choose how wild I wanna look. Hope you had fun joining me on this weaving and sewing adventure. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons to help support my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.